All right, you guys, next we have one of my favorites, <laughs> one of my best friends, Simone Holder, who is the producer of this amazing show. So let's give her a round of applause right now. Woo! Thank you. Also the host of Shooting the Breeze, where she interviews amazing people. You guys should check that out on Facebook. She's the co-host of Black Don't Crack with Don Zanklin, who was our opener. And she and I also host a show together. I highly recommend checking Simone out on Facebook or wherever you can find her. Put your hands together for our amazing producer, Simone Holder. Thank you. Hi, everyone, thank you. So when I can't find my cats in my apartment, all I have to do is shake the treat bag and they come running from wherever they are. The same thing happens to me when someone shakes the ice cube tray, I come running like, yay, vodka. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to learn how to sext. So I signed up for a service called Slutbot. You heard me right. It's a free virtual coach that shows you how to sext. And I should have signed up for, I should have signed up to get texts from a female bot so that I could learn what to text, but I didn't. So I've been getting gross, aggressive texts from a male bot. Um, I don't know how to change the settings. So I've been ghosting the bot. And I don't know the bot's pronouns, but he, it is very persistent and creepy, just like an actual man, but without the dick pics. <laughs> You should think of your relationships like working out at the gym. Like if you leave one piece of equipment to go to another piece of equipment, don't be upset or surprised when you decide to come back and someone else is on your equipment because you didn't know what you had when you had it. <laughs> also, when you finish, wipe off your equipment. <laughs> When should someone spring a kink on you? Like, should it be right away or later on? My vote is never, because I'm worried that I'm the kink. It's happened. It's happened. I've always wanted to be slapped around during sex by a beautiful Black woman. Thanks a lot, Kyle. That's great, Kyle. I can't even slap you because I'll be fulfilling your fetish. You leave me no, no choice but to punch you in the throat. <laughs> And um, I also loathe references to my skin tone because it's racist, they're racist, they're corny and stupid, and they render me instantly bone dry. And it's so irritating and it really hurts to walk. <laughs> you know, you're supposed to be increasing the moisture content of my body, not depleting it. I don't have any kinks myself unless fucking younger white men is a king. <laughs> Whenever I'm asked about my type, I answer with sweet, attractive, funny, with a bit of an edge. But looking at my history, my type is all of that, but with a little poster boy for the Nazi party thrown in. So yeah, my taste in men mimic my teeth, straight and white. <laughs> Penises are ugly. I mean, I like them, but they're ugly. And I think I've seen two beautiful ones in my entire sexual lifetime. My last hookup had a gorgeous one and I told him that, but he wouldn't believe me. And I said, it's true, it's beautiful. Eventually he believed me all over my chest. <laughs> I'm, I'm fat. And whenever I say that, someone says, no, no, don't say that. You're beautiful. You're so pretty. Thank you. And I know. I said I was fat, not ugly. <laughs> My ideal weight is Sidney Crosby on top of me. <laughs> I'm not reality show fat. I'm not fetish fat. I'm not circus fat. I'm what I like to call still fun to ride fat. And uh, my weight is none of your concern unless I'm sitting on your face and even then. <laughs> I'm peaking right now. I'm at my most alluring and most desirable now. And I'll tell you why. 
I'm attractive, I'm confident, I'm comfortable with my body, and I know how to fuck. <laughs> in my 20s, I was gorgeous, but I had no life experience. I knew nothing other than what I learned in school, and I was horribly insecure. If I had my looks from my 20s, combined with the experience, confidence, and dick enthusiasm of my 50s, oh my God, <laughs> I did not know what hit it. For all the men over the age of 18, or in my preferred demographic, from about 30 to 42, lock them up. <laughs> is, uh, is eating ass on the menu for sex nowadays? Like, geez. I, I, I don't think I can do it. Actually, correction, I, I don't want to do it. You know, it seems like every generation has something new to add to the menu. And like what was considered taboo or kinky once upon a time is now like the norm. Even kissing has changed. You know, can, you ki can I kiss you on the lips is usually followed by me asking which lips. <laughs> <laughs> a friend of mine told me about a frightening encounter that he had with a cougar. He was lucky to survive because that woman would have torn him to pieces. <laughs> Clearly, she was a city cougar who still hunts in the wild. I don't know her age, but I'm just going to, ref I'm going to use the catch-all term of cougar to describe women who like younger men. So according to something called the feline scale, women in their 30s are pumas, 40s are cougars, 50s are jaguars, 60 to 68 are panthers, age 69 has its own term, pussycat. And the, the scale goes all the way up to age 100. So anyway, by that definition, I'm a jaguar who could pass as a puma. I don't need to hunt. The prey comes to me. <laughs> sure, active hunting in the wild is probably more, more bountiful and exciting, but who has that kind of time? My zoo-like environment is way more comfortable than the wild. And the quality catch that just presents itself to me is <laughs> <laughs> if I got a nickel for every time someone said something offensive to me that was supposed to be a compliment, I'd be a very wealthy woman. If you've said any of these things to someone, please stop. You don't sound black. I usually counter that with, what does black sound like? And I never get an answer. This is what an educated Canadian woman sounds like. If I grew up somewhere else, I would sound, I'd have that accent. You must be wild in bed. I am, but that is so not the point and it has nothing to do with race. Can I touch your hair? Do I look like a llama in a petting zoo? No, you may not touch my hair. And if you do it anyway, I'll cut you. <laughs> we should replace Shark Week with Karen Week. Sharks kill on average six people per year while Karen strive to ruin countless lives every day. Sharks tend to attack when they're confused or curious. It's not Karen's though. By contrast, Karen's are clear thinking and deliberate. Karen week would be much more exciting and unpredictable than shark week. A black family moves into the neighborhood. Will Karen mind her own fucking business? Of course not. <laughs> not. Watch Karen harass these people for parking in their own driveway. Someone tells Karen no. Watch Karen demand to speak to the, the manager right before her head explodes. That's my time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Simone. Amazing. Thank you.